Hello everyone, and today we're going to discuss the post uh, from the Bioware uh, developers that was made uh, on the 10th of March. Uh, so basically in patch 7.0.1, uh, they are going to remove the rotational or the weekly rotation content. Um, I think this was a terrible idea in the first place. Imagine you have so little content in your game and yet you're going to segment that content even further to just highlight how little content you're going to have. Um, so this was a post made by one of the developers called uh, Chris Schmidt. Uh, again, so again, it was made on the 10th of... 10th of March, so I'm recording this on the 12th. This will probably go up the 13th of March, so a few days later after this. Um, so this is the, uh, they said that they wanted to take, to, well, to, first of all, a little peek behind the scenes of the world game design. When designing changes for a game as large and as complex as Star Wars The Old Republic, there are many things that need to be taken into account between the interplay of lots of different systems and features in the game, understanding how any change to one can affect the experience of all the rest. Did they really do that when they changed a lot of their abilities over? And then didn't really change a lot of the combat encounters? Um, I don't think they did. They don't think they took it into account. Sometimes difficult to fully simulate on paper how the sum of the parts fit together greater cohesive whole. That's why you've got a test. That's why you've got, that's why I said lack of care and attention because that's what you need the care and attention to make that if you're designing new content you can design the new content around the new character abilities like that's what mmos like wow do in final fantasy 14 if they make changes to the classes they're usually adding a ton of new dungeons to the latest expansion that they come out with so those dungeons can be balanced around those classes the dungeons can be designed at the same time as the class changes and then they can be tested and tuned to that this just feels like they've just done it haphazardly so they said we prototype test iterate and test some more some of these may be public test opportunities of a particular piece of the puzzle we're curious about the, or the pts but they never listened to a lot of the pts a lot of people complained about the gearing system, they complained about a lot of things on the PTS that they didn't listen to, a lot of taking away, some of the abilities they've taken away are kind of fundamental to our class, so we've got a choice between damage output and utility and survivability. Before we had all these, and the game was designed around these utilities that we had, now we've got less utilities. As a DPS, you're always going to pick the damage numbers because DPS is a numbers game that's how it works you know if you're not pulling the numbers you get kicked from the group that's simple as that you got to pull those numbers and um, I just think they've messed up on this with the the content um, that they've changed uh, so one of the things is they said one of the major ways uh, that ensuring our various uh, systems reward players are being active in the game such as conquest galactic seasons weekly missions have a bit of interplay to ensure if the players want to be part of a particular sort of reward like gear, cosmetics or guilds, they would be other players completing the same content in any given week. The problem is though with, with that is, especially with the heroic areas that you've changed into the weeklies uh, or, or the weeklies that week is you're funneling all the players into like a small area. Like CZ198 is a small area. Yes, we've got open mob tagging but we don't have things like clickables we have to wait a long time for clickables to respawn and that is quite annoying and it does slow you down a lot and then you've got places like yavin where yes we can kill an enemy and we'll, we'll get credit for the kill you'll get experience and we can loot the enemy but we don't get quest credit because we didn't click the button to spawn the enemy because whoever clicks the button to spawn the enemy will get the quest credit. Why are these things not changed or removed to reflect that? I think funneling all the players into one type of one area is not a good idea. It's not good for the game. I don't think that is a great idea. Um, so they, they wanted to make groups easier to form for smaller content, even when reward goals differ. Uh, to make it easier to get help from other players via shared tagging and heroics and dailies. Yes, that, that is true. Um, but again, uh, needs to be changed like the Yavin quests I think some of them need to be changed like click the thing to summon the enemy and then kill the enemy just 
three quests, I believe, that are like that. There's the one uh, where you summon the big, um, what was it, the big creature thing. There's the one where you summon the Revenite thing, and the, when you do the Revenite Commander's one. And there is one where you summon another creature uh, as well later on. So there's like a couple of quests like that where you have to summon the creature. So yes, you'll get XP for killing the mob, but you don't get credit towards uh, quest completion again unless you summoned the mob. So it's whoever gets to the clickable first has to do it. You can even loot the enemy at the end of it, which is kind of weird. Uh, they wanted to make operations more accessible to players who have never tapped into story mode before, adding more options each week in group finder. Why don't I just have all the ops available and then you can pick and choose what you want to do. That's the whole point. Give players choice. Uh, the flashpoints are a bit annoying as well because not all flashpoints are equal, really. Um, not all not all of them are equal. Like Lost Island in the same category as Mandalorian Raiders? No, because Lost Island should be tier 2. Why can't they just have tiers for flashpoints? They did this when Group Finder first launched. When did Group Finder launch? Was it 1.3 or 1.4? I can't remember. But it was back then, and they had Kaon Under Siege and Lost Island were separate in Tier 2 for Flashpoints. Hard mode and I think normal mode had them as well for Tier 2. So why can't they do this? Why can't they group the Flashpoints? They said that they're going to change uh, some of the Flashpoints are going to be not available to lower level enemies. That's fine. So they'll not be making all veteran Flashpoints available at level 15. Instead, we will retain each Flashpoint's existing level restrictions. Make all Flashpoints available in the Group Finder every week. Again, that, that's fine. Uh, but make a Tier 1 and a Tier 2. Tier 1 can be done from 15 to 80, and that's all the easy Flashpoints. And then Tier 2 is the harder Flashpoints. Um, again, level 80 only, maybe, or 75 to 80, something like that. And again, same with the Master Modes. Put them in Tier 1 and Tier 2. Tier 2 should have better rewards, though. Remember Lost Island used to give you raid gear at the end? If you defeated Dr. Leoric, you would always get um, raid gear dropping from that. that. Maybe that's what they should do with that. Again, respect. I think the problem is they don't respect players' time. Uh, if you look at that post, I'll put a link to it in the description uh, so you can read the post. The first comment makes sense. Um, it says, any thoughts on synchronizing the time it takes to complete different daily heroic zones? Uh, weekly missions similar to how you intend to do with flashpoints. Again, yeah, a player doing Zerka weekly can complete two full sets of the weekly in the time it takes to do one weekly heroic mission on Taris. Yet yeah, this is a good point. See, the player, most of the players know um, exactly what's needed for the game here. Uh, again, uh, why do you need to design and test and iterate and do that when you can just look at it on paper and say? The time it takes to complete said mission is not there, it's not compatible with the reward. Because players generally will always take the path of least resistance. There's a reason why things like CZ198 and Zyost are more preferable to doing something like the later heroics, like um, Taris. Taris is an early heroic on the Republic. Uh, but things like Belsavis, for example, the, the heroics are quite lengthy there in the later planets in the game um, but the rewards are the same so why would you bother doing that you still get the same amount of aquatic resources the same amount of tech fragments i think you get more credits for doing heroics and you can argue there's more enemies to kill so more credits will drop but credits aren't really a resource that we really care about farming for end game gear at least credit there's only about 25k credits for an end game gear piece it's nothing really uh, in there in terms of the credit cost but in terms of the resources it's the amount of resources you can earn per hour that's the most efficient way to play and this style was introduced in 5.0 this is what they introduced then uh, again it's not about the fun it's about efficiency and again we've just swapped command xp for resources that's all the difference is what they've done in this end game uh, before it was cxp farming and again that's why people did raids where they did Karaga's Palace, killed the trash, exited the, before the first boss, killed the trash, exit the raid, then change the leader, reset the instance, go back in, farm the trash. It was the most efficient way to go. 6.0, uh, it was Hammer Station ended up being the most efficient way. Again, it was just getting as much loot as you could uh, in a short period of time. 
a lot of players figured out this was Hammer Station. Again, players will always take the path of least resistance. So I think what they need to do is respect the player's time in terms of the content they want us to do. If you want us to do harder content, make it more rewarding to do the harder content. It's not really harder mostly, it's mostly just a time sink. Because again, like the, the first comment on the uh, the post said there, they need to reward that time. It, you can do the entire CZ198 in about, what, 10, 15 minutes. Ziost is the same. Again, you can do that in 10, 15 minutes. They've also got Osis as the daily area. Osis takes upwards of 20 minutes to half an hour because it's bigger, uh, a bigger area. So, But again, you get the same rewards for doing that weekly quest. So what is the point? That's why everyone did Ord Mantel and Coruscant Heroics every week because they're quick and easy. And again, you get the same reward as doing, again, Belsavis Heroics, for example. Belsavis Heroics can be difficult. Oh, there is one where you just go up and click a droid and that's it uh, in Belsavis. But then, you know, again, they don't value the time. So time taken to complete the, the quest should be reflected in its reward rather than just use a one-size-fits-all approach to it. I think that is the design flaw. And it's good that they're they're taking a look at these design flaws and they're actually going to address some of them, at least with the flashpoints, I suppose. That's progress, at least. But the problem is, is these problems have been in the game for years. Why is it taking them this long to get there? You know, you could have pointed that out in 4.0. We could have pointed this out in 5.0. 4.0 was massively flawed when it came to the op of the week. They haven't learned from restricting content. That's what makes you so frustrated with them is why haven't they learned? Didn't they learn with making Eternity Vault and Caraga's Palace the op of the week? It was terrible. Whenever that was the weekly op, you just had to farm that on all your alts. It was so annoying, especially since I was a scoundrel as well. I always had to do the bloody stealth run to get to the second boss. That was fun because I could scamper over and avoid all the droids and get to the part where you unlock the speeder to get to the second boss. I remember doing that so many times. I was really good at it in the end. I was really efficient at it, but it was really annoying having to do that. And then I would go back and log out and go back on my main character again, which was the Vanguard. But yeah, I had to respec <laughs> to re-log out log back in, get invited to the raid, go and skip the trash, because nobody wanted to fight trash. It was kind of weird. Nobody wants to fight it. It's like, you would rather have you log out, stand outside the raid as your scoundrel. Put your scoundrel outside the raid. At least now, with the combat styles, everybody can play a stealth class. Now, everybody respect to stealth, leave and respect to stealth, although you can't do it inside the operation. That's why you got to leave the operation. I suppose you just fight the trash, I guess, but... Again, all they've done is replace command XP with the the currency resources. That's all they've done is basically replace that. They've replaced one grindy system for another. At least with Renown XP, it wasn't that relevant. You never really felt like you needed to grind Renown XP because it was more about the chests that you got uh, in there. So hopefully this gets better um, with time. It's nice that they've listened, but for me... It's just too long. It's a day late and a dollar short they are. Where were they a few years ago listening to this and, and doing this? This should have been implemented. It was implemented correctly in 1.0. Like when they first implemented Group Finder, it was fine. The two hardest flashpoints in the game, Keon Under Siege wasn't that hard to be honest, but Lost Island was in its own separate little category and gave raid gear and this was fine. I don't, don't see any problem. Because LI is, it can be hours of, if you get Lost Island popping up, uh, most people tend to quit. Because if you quit, it's a 10 minute penalty. Or if you do Lost Island, it can be hours of grinding and failing, you know, potentially there. Uh, depending on how much time you've got to put into it. So again, increase the rewards for the harder things. Um, but then put them in tier 2. Uh, so that people that want, people that just want to play casually don't have to have the harder flashpoints because it's sometimes better just to take the 10 minute penalty um for quitting than slogging through some of the later flashpoints in the game uh, it ends up just being so much it's just a better choice really because it's just a time sink there so hopefully they respect our time uh but anyway that is all for this video so thank you for joining me and we'll see you again soon and goodbye